Hello, I'm Sue Romna from Edison Group, and today we're catching up with the CEO of Erlab. Erlab is a Scandinavian clinical stage CNS biotech with an ISP platform. Welcome, Gunnar. Thank you very much. So you recently received the green light from the FDA for the phase three trial for Mestopatam. Can you provide an overview of the planned program? Absolutely. You're right. We had a very successful end of phase two meeting with the FDA in February, where we got full alignment on the phase three program. The program will consist of two double blind studies that will be running in parallel. Each of the study will include about 130 patients to be randomized to placebo or 7.5 milligram BID uh, of mestopetam. The patient to be included are individuals with Parkinson and disabling lids. They will be treated for three months and after three months, there will be an evaluation with the primary endpoint being the UDSRS section one, three, and four. And that is the, the variable that we had in our phase 2B study that came out with good statistical and clinical significance. So we're looking forward to get these studies started. Following the three month double blind treatment, all the individuals in the studies will be invited to participate in an open label extension trial for three, uh, for at least 12 months. And this is uh, to generate patient safety data that is required for the NDA submission. And that is at least 100 individuals being treated with the ordinary dose of the drug uh, for at least 12 months. So for your second asset for Piripamat, it, it's a um, phase 2B trial, which is striving to improve balance and reduce falls in Parkinson's disease patients. Can you go over the need to address such a specific symptom and describe the best case scenario for the results for these studies? Yeah, for individuals with Parkinson, if you really ask what is the most disabling symptom that you have, and that type of study has been performed by the uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation. And in interviewing some 25,000 individuals with Parkinson, it came out very strongly that uh, that falls and impaired balance is the most uh, disabling symptoms. Despite this and the very large medical need, there is today no available therapy. So we believe that pyrimat here uh, is a drug with a very large potential. When it comes to the ongoing study, we are now recruiting patients into the study. Uh, we had a positive uh, second and final pre-scheduled review of the DSMB, uh, reviewing the data integrity and the safety of the trial. They unanimously recommend us to just continue the study until completion. So we anticipate that patient recruitment will end at the end of this uh, quarter. And that means that we should be able to report top line results from this study about end of quarter one next year. So we, we believe that it's an important study. We have some data to look forward to. And for us, we of course want to see the outcome of the study being sufficient for us to be able to make a decision on dose selection for phase three, as well as uh, the investment decision to move on to phase three. Right, and and you mentioned the Michael J. Fox Foundation. You have, um, you've, you've received some external validation from both the Michael J. Fox Foundation and the McQuaid Center of Strategic Research and Development for IRL 757. Can you share background on these collaborations and how these separate groups are supporting the program? Absolutely. We are very pleased to have collaboration with both of these uh, uh, two organizations. Uh, as you may know, we receive 
uh, a grant from uh, the Michael J. Fox Foundation last December. And that is to cover the execution of the first phase one study that includes a sad part, a mad part, and a, a food interaction part. That study is now ongoing and Michael J. Fox Foundation, they have a representative at the study steering committee that oversees the, the running of the study. In May earlier this year, we made an agreement with MSRD, part of the Utsuka family, uh, where we agreed to collaborate to take the compound all the way through to clinical proof of concept. And that is treatment of apathy in individuals with Parkinson and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this agreement means that we have formed a joint steering committee that oversees all activities. When the decisions are taken, uh, ERILAB is executing the activities. Uh, in the agreement, we are receiving uh, an upfront and milestones in total eight and a half million US dollars. And in addition to that, the MSRD will take all the costs for the activities up to and through the clinical proof of concept. And that means that this compound, the IRL 757, is now fully funded all the way through to the clinical proof of concept. Yeah, that, that's amazing. So um, with, with that, you have a really full pipeline with three assets in the clinic. How, how does this impact your development for the two preclinical assets, IRL 942 and IRL 1117? So far, we have been very pleased to be able to run all our five projects. But of course, a small company with a large portfolio, we need to be good at handling a quick decision on prioritization so that we are doing the right thing at the right time in order to drive value generation. Uh, the situation we have right now, that is that for Mestopetan, we're now in business development discussions to seek a partner so that we can get the funding to get the phase three uh, program up and running. Uh, for Piripmat, we have all the funds we need to take the, the phase 2B study to completion and report the top line results. For IRL 757, as we discussed, we have now full funding all the way to uh, and through clinical proof of concept. And for the preclinical compounds, the 942 and 1117, we are running CMC activities and uh, those activities we have um, funding for. So we've covered a lot. Maybe it's, uh, would it be possible to summarize the key upcoming milestones and catalysts investors should look for in the next 12 to 18 months? Absolutely. We've had a tremendous year so far. And when we look ahead of the next 12, 18 months, we are very excited about what could potentially happen and the, the value creating uh, events that, that could happen. So if I take them project by project, for Mestopetan, of course, we continue the business development activities. And uh, uh, of course, we are looking for getting a partnership uh, uh, arranged so that we can start the phase three activities. Uh, for Pyramid, it is completion of the ongoing phase 2B study and then getting the top line results out by end of uh, quarter one next year. For 757, it is to continue the phase one activities to completion and then initiate the first patient study where we are starting to look for efficacy and safety signals. And then for the preclinical uh, compounds to get them through the preclinical de development and get them into phase one testing. And I should say there that 1117, uh, the compound where we are aiming to treat uh, the cardinal symptoms of, uh, of Parkinson, there we anticipate that we may see 
uh, efficacy signals already in the phase one activity. This compound is very special and we believe that it has the potential to replace levodopa in the long run. So we are very excited about that compound. So, so thank you, Gunnar, for the update. Thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about our lab, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you. Thank you.